Chris, welcome to Rock and Roll English. Hello, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. I think you are one of the most famous people that we've ever had on the show. I was extremely happy when I saw one day that you had followed me on Instagram and I thought, oh my God, what is so a superstar like this following an idiot like me for? Well, you know, I just uh, like to see if I can steal any of your ideas. Right. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think so, but, <laughs> but only because my ideas are so bad, not because you can't. You're more than welcome <laughs> to steal any of my ideas, but I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, well, I think it was you. Was it something related to music? And I was like, oh, it's quite unique. Um, mm. cause it was, was it almost a year ago now? I feel like it was the beginning of last uh, year. Not so I'm, sure I'm, I'm, about that. My mind's a bit blurry now but uh but yeah i remember it being quite interesting okay uh, well, and also uh, it's i think quite rare to find other british um teachers on like teaching on the internet it's really, really hard that, not that i'm saying other people can't do it but it's nice to um you know have people from your own country and you can connect with them you know absolutely. they get the references and stuff but yeah it's quite rare uh, absolutely we we are a dying breed uh getting taken over by americans yeah <laughs> Um, but yeah, as I said, very happy to have you on the podcast. And so obviously you are an English teacher and something I think interesting about you is that you were actually born in Oxford that I suppose you were destined to become an English teacher. No. Yeah, it has, um, it has opened up a lot of doors for me. <laughs> I can imagine. And, uh, I remember it for, I think it actually helped me to get my job in Peru. Like I had the job interview. <laughs> And it was like a Skype or yeah, it was Skype Skype interview. And I literally just, you know, I introduced myself instead of from Oxford and I saw her eyes just sort of light up. <laughs> and I was like, okay, maybe I just won't mention I didn't study in Oxford. I literally was just born there. And then I remember they were, I was on the Zoom call or sorry, the Skype call for about an hour. And she was literally just walking around the office, going to different departments and like handing the phone uh, to other people. And I was talking with the director of marketing and then the director of studies and then it's basically just everyone wanted to have a chat with me it was quite <laughs> it was quite nice but yeah, yeah I didn't do anything apart from like being from Oxford yeah I can imagine it's strange how I think you only notice this when you go abroad that well when I notice people talk about England they generally just talk about London mm. and then if it's in, in an English like teaching conversation idea let's say then obviously oxford and cambridge get mentioned as well um and yeah speaking of oxford one of my very close friends a regular on the podcast actually went to oxford and he always tells people yeah i went to university in oxford but he doesn't tell people he went to oxford brooks which is right. the the other university not you know the oxford um but yeah, that's his classic. Yeah, I went to university in Oxford and certainly talking to someone abroad, to someone abroad, they don't question that and just, oh, you went to university in Oxford? Like, he's a genius when really that that's definitely not the case. <laughs> um, <laughs> but so you now as well live in Barcelona, yeah? That is correct, yeah, live in Barcelona. I've been living here for about one year now, one year in November. Right, okay, fantastic. So... I thought we could talk about Barcelona, obviously make comparisons to like the UK as well, where we're from, because I've done lots of these podcasts about like specific cities or countries and people generally like to listen to them because the people from those places obviously have an insight and obviously people that are not from have an insight too. So I've got some very random points here and we can just have a chat about them. Okay. Excellent. Um, so I also contacted someone in the Rock and Roll English family, the membership area, who lives in Barcelona and asked him if he had any questions for you as well. And he, men he mentioned something about English level and how that is, especially, I suppose, as an English teacher, what is that like in Barcelona? Because in my five minutes research that I always do, and I just typed in like pros and cons of living in Barcelona, I was surprised that it said everyone speaks english is that the case i would i would have to say yeah um really especially in the center however i i wouldn't necessarily necessarily say that it's all spanish speakers or people from spain sorry or catalans i should say how good is their english i'm not entirely sure it's just because barcelona is very international it's a bit like mm. london so 
I know a lot of people from Argentina, from Peru, Colombia, uh, Germans, Polish. There's loads of so my friendship group is very mixed nationality wise, and everyone has fantastic English. Right. So okay. I've never really had any problem. But again, I live quite central as well, so that might yeah. be a factor. It's interesting that when you are living in a country as a foreigner you naturally attract other foreigners. So when I lived in Rome and then when I lived in Sicily, like I had friends from all over the world in both of those places. So especially when I lived in Sicily and I was talking then to Sicilians and I would say, for example, oh, my, my friend from Peru. And they would say like, what? Like someone from Peru lives here. But it's right. just, you. But, and strangely, when I lived in London before I had lived abroad, I didn't know one foreigner, <laughs> not not because I didn't want to talk to foreigners, just because I had my group of friends, like we went to school together. We yeah. didn't know any foreigners at all, um, which is crazy because London is you know, one of the most international cities in the world. Yeah, I think that's 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 it, isn't it? Because you have your group growing up, uh, you have your cliques, let's say. Yeah. It's quite hard to infiltrate those those groups <laughs> um in a way i'm still trying to infiltrate some catalans here but yeah it's, it's quite tricky in that sense it is yeah anyone tries to infiltrate um the group of friends that i have we say like no what are you doing like no one yeah, can infiltrate this group get out <laughs> <laughs> it's done maximum yeah. membership exactly uh, i actually think my close group of friends we are actually a bit like that anytime another friend has has brought another friend with them generally it has always been english people always just think like why did you bring him like we were supposed to be talking about like teachers at school like and now we can't yeah. because someone else is here yeah it's true you have to reference everything we're referring <laughs> to this and yeah, it slows it, down the fun exactly um so another thing apparently um, barcelona is famous for is festivals I, is this true are there many festivals have you been to any yeah i think a lot more for example before I used to live in Malaga in the south of Spain in Andalusia mm. and I would say there's far more festivals here than there were there so I think it might be specifically a, a very Catalan thing like there's one the most famous one I think is called well during the summer basically every neighborhood has their own festival oh, right. and wow. it sort of it lasts usually for like a week um, mm. I think the most famous one is in Gracia which is just north of where I am now and they basically just sort of decorate all the streets in different themes. There was like a jungle one. Oh. Uh, there was a, um, a sea one, let's say. Um, there was a salsa area or let's say a Latin music area. And basically the whole week just parties every day and every night. Okay. Um, and then after that week, I think that was in August. And then the next one starts the end of August, September is in Sants, which is another area. Um, on the opposite side of the city and that's sort of very similar again it's sort of very themed and then lots of music and just parties for the, the whole week so I don't really know how anyone in those neighborhoods gets, in gets through the week yeah <laughs> I generally don't know it's crazy um, yeah but it's very true there's also the, the music festival as well um, I think you mentioned previously that you have been to one or yeah, in our pre-podcast chat, I spoke about uh, Benicassim, which is near Valencia, I believe, because it was quite a while ago that I went to this. I went two years on the bounce. Oh, so wow. I think it was maybe 08 and 09. It was always the standard. You go the second year, and it's like, ah, oh, it's not as good as the first year was. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's quite hard to sleep. I went to it as well. And it's quite, there's, no, there's no break from, because the music sort of ends at 6 a.m. Mm. And then you go back to your tent. And then the sun comes up about 8 a.m. And then exactly. your your tent is like an oven by 10 a.m. So you're like, oh, I have to wake up now. Otherwise, I'm just going to sweat to death. Mm. So, you know, I didn't really get any sleep. I came back like sort of, what is it, sleep paralysis? I had. Right. When I got back, I was just like in bed for like three days, just yeah. laying there. Very, very, very similar to my experience there. And you mentioned in our pre-podcast chat, you asked if I had been to Barcelona and we... So we flew to Barcelona for to go to this festival. And I remember when we got back to Barcelona, we stayed, I think, one night there and we had a hostel 
and there were like six of us in this hostel room that like all six my friendship group not letting anyone else in obviously <laughs> um and i just remember us all getting into bed and there was just all of these noises everyone was just going ah because it was just number one to be on a proper bed instead of like the last five days in a tent was amazing yeah. and it was quiet and it wasn't hot and then everyone just fell asleep instantly but i I had never been so pleased in my life to find a bed and sleep. It was just, oh my God, so good. It's hard good. work, isn't it? it? It's it's very hard work. L luckily, I, I was a, a lot younger there. Um, certainly, Dang. certainly don't think I would be able to cope with that now. Um, but yeah, so it's certainly fun at the time. But yeah, these festivals sound sound great as well. I do have this impression I hope this isn't offensive in any way. I don't think it is to Spanish people that Spanish people do love to party, as you mentioned. Just it just seems to be my impression. Even like when I've been other times to Spain, I remember when I was in Valencia and just like seeing people carry on dancing until like six o'clock in the morning, just thinking, like, how how can you keep doing this? Like I I need to go to bed now. Yeah, I don't think it takes them. There isn't much of an excuse to celebrate something. <laughs> they are, you know, it's like, oh, there's another bank holiday. What is this one for? Oh, some saint, but this is what we do. And then it involves <laughs> drinking for three days or, you know, but not the the thing is, I, I think they actually enjoy these parties compared to British people where it's like, if we have that kind of thing, it would be, let me see how much alcohol I can drink within <laughs> three hours. They actually just have a couple of drinks or they drink, you know, some people, obviously there's variations, but I think they actually just enjoy mm. like the situation or yeah, they seem I... to party more, but not recklessly mm. or recklessly. I yeah. That word. Recklessly, I would go for recklessly. of those. Sorry. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, I totally agree. And I think as certainly as a British person, this is something I have a lot of difficulty understanding. Certainly a similar thing to Italians. When I go to Italian weddings, I just can never get my head around the fact that they dance between the plates so they'll have the starter and then everyone will get up and start dancing as if it's like two o'clock in the morning and it's like full-on like proper going for it and then a few minutes later everyone just sits down again and just eats normally and then they get up again and i i just can't i just look at them and i think how are you enjoying yourself if you're not like totally drunk like how how is yeah. that possible because for my british mentality it's if i'm up dancing going crazy that means like i'm like i'm gone i've yeah, i've had so much to drink that i can barely stand up kind of thing i think no british person ever has danced without being at least tipsy <laughs> oh yeah so like, certainly british minimum. male maybe yeah, there, there, some, yeah. some girls but a british male to dance well in my opinion without being it beyond tipsy is just is just ludicrous, it's just Ill Ill ludicrous. yeah and another time i was in france actually with a friend living there obviously he was in an international crowd and we went to this place and there was like some south american thing and lots of people were dancing as soon well, as soon as we got there and we were both like we are going to just stand at the bar for the next yeah. three to four hours <laughs> And then possibly we we will go over there, but it was just for, like such an intimidating atmosphere for two British guys walking in there, totally sober, and immediately everyone doing all these crazy South American dances. We were like, "Whoa, <laughs> slow down! <laughs> this is this is not for us." Um, okay, but another one. So this is a, a cultural thing. Yeah. What about the eating late thing? Have you have you developed this culture because? Like for me in Italy, they eat late, but Spain, from my experience, take it to a new level. Yeah, I think um, it's something I've definitely adapted to. Um, so I would say nowadays I can have my dinner about nine, half okay. eight, half, half eight, nine. But then I'm kind of usually the first person in the restaurant if I go there. <laughs> you know, like they open up at eight. It's like, okay, I, I book for eight. Whereas I think most Spanish people kind of arrive 9.30, maybe mm. some 10. Um, it's not unusual to to see people in restaurants, you know, 11, that kind yeah. of thing. Um, but I, you know, I also recently back from Argentina and that was another another level. People, I think, <laughs> were booking tables for 11 and then eating until, you know, 1 a.m. or something. So that was, for me, it was a big, 
big difference. Mm. Um, but yeah, I definitely got I've got used to it now. I I think, yeah, I think it's not too bad because in my family we used to have dinner like five six. So <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It was a big jump in the beginning, um, but yeah, now I've kind of got used to it really, and mm. uh, it's not too bad. Yeah, I do notice. So my wife is from Sicily, and. So we've just got back from there as well. When I'm there, there's just something in the air which just makes having dinner at five really weird. Like I almost feel like I, I can't do that. And when we talk to people there, because now we've got two young children, we have dinner between five and six, normally closer oh, really? to five, to be honest, yeah. um, because obviously the kids have to go to bed and stuff. When we tell people in Sicily, when I say to someone, yeah, no, we I have dinner at like, I don't know, half past five honestly their reaction is is if like i've just told them i've murdered someone they're like yeah. what five thirty like, what <laughs> i said like, calm down it's okay <laughs> yeah it's i think it's just all weather related isn't it in mm, terms I of think like so. it, it, like like now um in the uk it's getting darker like four right i imagine yeah yeah exactly yeah so like you, you know you don't want to be eating you, you go to bed earlier or well i think some people would do anyway just because the sun goes down earlier whereas here it's more like it gets i think still yeah it gets dark about six so it's a little bit later yeah um and i think there is something in that that so again when i was living in sicily i could get by with less sleep because i i feel it's maybe just in my head that the weather somehow was the, the sun was giving me some kind yeah. of energy whilst in the uk like yeah well, i mean my generally my kids go to bed at seven and i and i think i would like to go to bed now as well normally <laughs> i've got things to do but i would if i could i would go to bed at seven but um unfortunately it's not possible i remember being in sicily and i could easily sleep from midnight till six in the morning and I'd wake up and I, I would be fine. In the UK, if I do, if I only sleep that much, I'm definitely not fine. And did you, but, did you also feel that you were constantly on holiday? Like you never, you weren't like it wasn't, um, you know, you weren't living a normal life. It was constantly like, oh, I'm just in Sicily, even if you're working there and so on. Yeah, kind kind of yes, I must admit it. And that's what I think is one of the not so great things about living in the uk again it's like oh god this is real life again now yeah that's what, I, that's what i feel like here i just i feel like i haven't lived in the uk for nine years now and i just feel like i'm in the sort of peter pan mode of like i'm never getting old it's like i definitely am but i just feel like i'm on holiday all the time yeah no i i definitely experienced that and from at my place the, the place we had in sicily we actually had a beach view, a very nice beach view from the balcony. So going out there in the morning, I just remember thinking, oh, I've made it in life. And now I'm back at my hometown where it's dark by 4 p.m. and I want to go to bed at 7. So, yeah, that's probably the reason why I often think about moving back, but never mind. So on the weather thing, so you, you obviously enjoy that because I think it's got two sides to it that in the summer it can get – very hot like are you okay coping with those temperatures in the summer um yeah here in barcelona it's a little bit easier because for me it was horrendous in in malaga right. because they used to have these things these these really intense heat waves right um that would come from the sahara okay. and it's it feels like you step out of the, your house and it feels like you're in an oven like yeah, it's, I, I know that feeling it's really <laughs> intense like the, it's it's hot there sometimes anyway, but these specific heat waves were like crazy hot. Um, so here, yeah, I've only had I've only spent one summer here, and uh, I found it pretty pleasant. I mean, obviously it was hot sometimes, but you just go down the beach and then you're like, oh well, pretty yeah, yeah. pretty refreshed. Um, you do have more of a, a night life rather than the day thing. You know, in the mm -hmm. daytime you kind of don't really get up to that much apart from maybe you do something in the house or you go to the beach. But in the night, it's lovely. No, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the thing which I absolutely love about being abroad, which is just not possible in the UK, even if it's the hottest day in the year, at night in the UK, it's chilly. You still need a jumper, yeah. Yeah. Whilst like being able just to wear shorts and T-shirt all day and all night, like going out in shorts and T-shirt 
for me, there, there is nothing better than that. And that's what I absolutely loved about real summers because I, we don't really have that in the UK. In fact, every time I went abroad as a, like until the age, until I lived in Sicily, really, it was just like the air was different when you were abroad. It was just like, oh, like it's, it's warm and it's night. It's night. It's unbelievable. That probably only thing that made me think of just then is that the only thing I'm missing now is that when I used to live in the UK and I would go to Spain or to Italy or other places, I would get that excitement, you know, because <laughs> yeah. you, whereas now I just, I don't have that excitement about going to these hot countries because it's just like, well, it's normal. That. You know, it's, I don't really have, you know, you're on, you're on your Ryanair flight or EasyJet <laughs> flight and you're like, oh, yes. And you land in like Athens, you're like, oh, wow, it's lovely. It's just like, well, it's nice. Yeah, but I don't have that buzz. That, I didn't think about that because that buzz has come back to me because oh, when really? I go back to Italy, I mean, obviously when I went back recently, it wasn't so hot, but it definitely hotter and yeah. having that. But and I'd never thought about that because I remember one of my friends got married in Spain when I was in Italy and going there and it was actually less hot where I went than where I was. And all of my friends, like, oh, it's so nice. And I was like, Phew. I'll put my coat on in a minute. It's freezing. <laughs> it's only 30. It's not 35. Um, but yeah, no, yeah. definitely. Um, so what about the Catalan culture? Because I've, I've never really understood much about this, but is that, is this a uh, big thing? Do you, do you speak any Catalan? Do you try to speak any Catalan? Is it important to you? Like, how, tell us about it. Um, yeah, it's a good question. I think there is, there are a lot of unique things that they have here compared to other places I've been in Spain. Like they have, different festivals compared to other areas like um the big towers like the human towers i'm not sure what they call them but they like climb on top of each other okay and um <laughs> that's a big thing is it all right wow yeah it's, it's massive um, um i think it was in september um so that's really you know something very bizarre from an <laughs> outsider's point of view these massive i mean if it, if it were in the uk it wouldn't pass the health and safety regulations <laughs> That's for sure. The same as that the festival in in Gracia, the the street festivals, it's insane how they get away with that in terms of health and safety. It's such narrow streets, and everyone's just jammed in there, right. um, having a good time. But you know, it's definitely a little bit um, <laughs> dangerous. But that's part of Spanish culture, kind of living on the edge. Um, yeah. But yeah, in terms of in terms of Catalan, I don't really speak much Catalan. I used to live a little bit further out side of the city for mm. um i lived there for four months and it was definitely more Catalan than the center like i right. said it's more international course, than the center yeah. so i went i would go to like restaurants i think remember my mum visited me so we went to a cafe and i was oh, here's my time to shine i'll translate everything <laughs> for her and uh they gave me the menu in catalan and so i was like do you have the menu in spanish i said do you have the menu in spanish and they were like no and i was like wow oh my god so I had to kind of like translate from my phone, like, you know, it's quite different in terms of like, it looks like French. Some right. words are similar in Spanish, but a lot of it looks like French. So I couldn't really uh, understand it. Like they have poma is like manzana, which is apple. Right, but the, okay. the words are very different. Um, so I, I don't really think as a foreigner, they are not too bothered if you don't learn Catalan. Like it's not, yeah. it's not something they will be like, oh, you know, you're not trying at all. Because I think they probably understand as an English person, yeah, the, of course. the standards are pretty low already. So if you speak <laughs> Spanish, they're like, well, okay, you, you know, he's, he's doing it better than most English people. But uh, yeah. I think they don't really like when Spanish people come here and sort of, uh, I don't know, that's, that seems to be the friction that I see is other Spanish people from Madrid coming here and then oh, okay, of course. Spanish and they're like, <laughs> you know, they, there's a bit of rivalry, et cetera. But yeah. I think if you're a foreigner and you're speaking Spanish, then they would normally change and they, just, you know, they don't mind. Some words still slip in. Um, like they'll say, you know, mercy instead of gracias, which means thank you. Um, so in, in Catalan? It's mercy. Oh, so they're like French then. That's about the yeah. only thing I remember from uh, five years studying French in school. Well, I think it's the same, same with like going back to Apple. I think in French, Apple is like pomme or pom or something. You, you, and then... You're taking my French level too far. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> well, that's very basic as well. Um, so, yeah, it's it's definitely just a mix in my opinion. It sounds more like Spanish, but it looks more like French when you right. read it. That's about mm. my basic interpretation. Yeah, uh, interesting. Um, yeah, very interesting as well that uh, they didn't even have the menu in Spanish. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's it definitely... I've been to... I went to a um, 
a village with my girlfriend last year actually and um she's peruvian so she's fluent in spanish and uh and um i you know i can speak spanish okay but this lady so we sat down in this restaurant we're just driving around basically and we found this random village and we're like okay we need to eat went to this restaurant it was a lovely restaurant but it was like in a basement it was like someone's house basically sort of converted into like a sunday restaurant mm -hmm. and the woman spoke to us in catalan my wife was like oh sorry my girlfriend was like i don't understand um and then she was like oh don't worry okay we'll switch to spanish and then so she was speaking in spanish for a bit but then it slowly started going back into catalan like she <laughs> like she forgot that she was speaking catalan so like my wife oh, my girlfriend so i keep saying my wife she kept she she had to keep saying um like, oh, sorry, I don't get that. I don't understand what you mean by that. And then she's like, oh, yeah, sorry. And she would say it in <laughs> Spanish. So it, I think for them, they don't really, especially yeah. in the villages, they just speak Catalan all the time. So they don't of really course. notice this when they slip back into Spanish. Um, and there is some similarities as well. So yeah, so I thought it was an interesting take. That that thing, though, of just, I think it's an interesting thing about languages. Of So I, I've done that a few times. My wife's Italian. We speak Italian. So in the UK, I'll be talking to her in Italian and I remember we were in a restaurant and then the waiter was there and I just turned to the waiter and I was talking in Italian and I got like 30 seconds in and I'm surprised he didn't stop me before, but his face was just <laughs> trying to show off. <laughs> yeah. And then I realized, I was like, oh no, I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah. as, as well, how I think people, including myself, like if they're talking to someone who doesn't understand that, like, oh, well, sorry. And then they just say the exact same thing again in the exact same way. <laughs> like it's, yeah, well, or, English people. Anyway, yeah, exactly. Say it louder. Say it louder. And then if they don't understand, it's their problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, okay. So uh, another one on my list is um, tourists. So you mentioned, um, obviously, you live in the center. It's like obviously a big city. So as someone actually living there, what do you think? of tourists because when i lived in rome i was always thinking oh bloody hell some more american tourists like <laughs> in, but in reality i still always felt like i was a tourist in some ways like as a foreigner living there so um, yeah. what what about you well when i when i see like for example now we're, we're in january and I see people walking around in shorts and t-shirt. I always think, oh, there's, you know, it's my people, my people. Yeah, they... <laughs> and, it, you know, before the Spanish people would mention that when I first moved to to Spain, they would, they would say, oh, you can always tell when, you know, the English are, or, or even the Irish are around. And I'd be like, oh, what? You, you, that's a bit silly. And how will you know? But now as I've been here for three years now, I've been in Spain in total, you can definitely, it's very easy to spot oh, 100%. the, the yeah. British tourists knocking around. And <laughs> even... You know, and they, you can hear them getting really drunk and rowdy, big groups of lads, you know, on the mm. <laughs> stag do's and stuff. And you're like, this is really, you know, doing, it's, it's not working in my favor because every time I have to introduce myself in English <laughs> uh, or I have to say I'm English, then they're like, oh, okay. And I'm like, no, 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 not that one. I'm yeah. the other one. This is one of the Promise. good ones. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's an issue. But it, it, in the summertime, it, last year, for example, in the summer it was quite hectic in certain areas so i think there has been a lot of talk about barcelona being over populated with tourists um and i think it's just certain areas so as long as you stick away from those areas like la rambla um sagrada familia is the, the the cathedral in those specific areas then usually you're okay i would say yeah, yeah. you're okay but there's some hot spots that are just horrendous and you just want to fight people it's like get out of my way <laughs> But yeah, you know, it's no, not too bad. Exactly the what same. Was it like in Rome? Yeah, no, exactly the same. Like if you go, for example, like outside the Colosseum, like it's just absolute mayhem. And then you get, yeah. I, you get people saying things like really. Generally, I mean, the Americans obviously you can hear a lot easier, and I, I have well, this yeah. impression of Americans thinking like of Europe. The first place I imagine that they go to is rome they just i don't i don't know why i mean i may be wrong and you would have people saying things like um i mean there were we would always be sort of laughing at them i had like other friends as well that were tour guides and they would always be telling me stories one of them was like um oh my god it, it's so convenient that they made 
the Colosseum right next to the metro station. <laughs> it's like, no, I think the Colosseum was there before the, the metro <laughs> station was, was there. Yeah. Um, but as what you were talking about there, about people from uh, your country, our country, I had that when I was in Rome and the Six Nations rugby was on. And then, so you had like lots of people coming over. And I remember being on a tram and then there were lots of drunk men sort of like shouting at these girls on the tram. And so luckily we were on the, I was on the tram, not with these girls, just near them. And these, the English people were sort of saying things to them, trying to thinking they were funny and stuff. And then one of them, it was clearly very intoxicated, let's say, pulled down his trousers and pants oh and showed everyone everything oh my God. The, the crown jewels let's say Jesus and Christ. i'm sitting there on the tram just thinking oh my god because that you're the you're the one well actually no obviously the, the girls would be the worst affected but you are in the um you're also sort of affected by that but the next time you say oh i'm from the uk exactly they would be like oh they remember that guy that showed me his um so then you know he must be the same yeah um so <laughs> Yeah it's, yeah, it's it's terrible, isn't it? I think it's just I, I used to be when I was younger and I I used to do the interrail, did the interrail like twice okay. and also bought a car and drove around Europe. And I think definitely with my friends, we used to think we were above the law. You feel like, you know, Brits abroad, you definitely don't <laughs> feel like there are any laws, as to say, right? Um, not that I what did that, but you know, little things like probably drinking too much or mm you know stealing a little bit from the supermarket which is terrible but you know <laughs> you know steal the ham and then i'll be like yeah yeah you know i've i've got today's food for free <laughs> stealing the ham from the supermarket yeah honestly it was terrible i used to when i was like 18 i used to like have a budget of like 500 pounds and then i would be like how long can i stay in europe for? <laughs> and i remember specifically being in barcelona in this was 2009 i think uh -huh. and going in the supermarket and then just like buying the bread so that'd be like one euro and then buy steal the ham the ham was like three euros and i'd have that for two days and that'd be my food for two days and then so that sort of you, you get by with you know five euros a day it's like such a bad way to live wow how to live on a budget uh yeah it was it definitely wasn't what the, was that um thing. breakfast lunch and dinner bread yeah. and ham yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay that'd be it because then you'd have the leftover money for beers so it was like the but so that's why I assume these people, these other Brits or whoever, um, they used to be like that and they just never grew out of it. So they just mm. kind of go away on holiday and they just like still, well, it gets progressively worse. <laughs> yes. Flashing is definitely worse than stealing ham, I would say. Uh, so I think luckily I grew out of that. Um, yeah. it Again, I think just the sort of mentality of somewhere, of where you don't have from. Any, the other way, it doesn't work, but you don't have Spanish people in England like... Uh, it doesn't no. you never hear it the other way around do you no yeah I, I think it's i think it's just our not fantastic drinking culture which amplifies when we are abroad mm -hmm. so as you mentioned you your main focus there which I, i've been in the same boat is how can i have as much money as possible to go out drinking later um and that's the thing which I think where we don't cover ourselves in glory. I remember talking to a friend once. So I, I'd just moved to Italy. And so I was like 25, 26 and saying, I'd seen some cheap flights to go to Sweden. And I said, oh, you know, why don't, why don't we go to Sweden? So I, I was starting to move away from the mentality of if you go abroad, it's just get as drunk as possible every night. And I specifically remember the conversation. I said, oh, the flights are only like 10 pound, like there and back. And he said, yeah, but uh, it's really expensive to drink there. And I just remember saying, well, we don't necessarily need to get drunk. And he was just kind of like looking at me like, what? <laughs> like... Yeah, it is mad, isn't it? I think I've done been the same boat with like Copenhagen or something, seeing flights from from Bristol, uh, the closest airport near me to Copenhagen for like six pounds back in the day and i was like oh, we should go and then you start to look into it you're like oh no maybe it's a bit too expensive <laughs> the beer is more expensive than here and you know also the food and stuff you're like oh maybe let's just fly to barcelona again um yeah so it's definitely but now and now i definitely i'm so glad i, I appreciate culture a lot more mm. um 
which I think comes from living abroad. You kind of look at your own culture, which also is a good thing about living abroad. And I think everybody should do it. It kind of makes you look at your own culture and be like, that's not good. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Like... Yeah, certainly I think, I know in the past, for example, in many countries, I believe in the UK, I'm not 100% sure. You, when you got to 18, you had to do like one year military service. I think in the UK, when you get to 18, you should be sent abroad for one year to live. <laughs> Just so... Yeah. <laughs> You can understand and learn things like for example it's not actually necessary to get ridiculously drunk every time you go out that's not the idea of yeah, going maybe, out you know have a bit of food with your drink it's okay <laughs> it's okay have a sandwich have a beer and a sandwich at the same time it's fine you might enjoy it more absolutely I, yeah i've often told the story when i just got to italy someone was having a party so i was like right brilliant bought like 20 beers and got there and they they were cooking dinner and i was like what the fuck is this like i thought it was yes. <laughs> even be... i've i've had that the same way around where like i've been to parties in peru and also here in spain and i would turn up with drink and mm. i just assumed that we'll be there all night so i you know i buy a box like a crate yeah, or whatever. yeah, yeah same man. and then they're like are they all for you like people are like <laughs> just because you know they'll have like four or something that people people would just be like so confused that why have you brought 16 beers like i was like, oh because i'll probably drink like 10 and i'll share the other ones you know like and they're like what <laughs> so it's definitely those looks the looks on those people's faces over the years have been like yeah i'm yeah I'm, i think i'm an idiot um, yeah so no i change that now absolutely um well i mean it, it's been great getting this sort of perspective from someone else and knowing it it wasn't just me that had all of these sort of realizations um, and someone else has been yeah. through this. Um, so, I mean, just in the off chance that no one um, knows where to find you, Chris, tell us where we can find out more about you. Um, you just have to type in instant English um, because, you know, you watch my videos and then instantly you speak English. Um, <laughs> you, I'm on YouTube, I'm on Instagram, TikTok and Facebook. Okay. So, one of those ones. Yeah. Okay. And as I'm sure I mentioned in the introduction, Chris's videos are unbelievable. So just so beautiful to watch. Like <laughs> I just, like I mentioned in our pre-podcast chat, I'm watching one of Chris's videos where he's talking about vocabulary, which obviously I know, but I'm, and I'm thinking, why, why am I watching this video? But it's just because you have all of these wonderful effects. And I'm thinking, oh, wow. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to be the Scorsese of, english teachers on on tiktok or wherever <laughs> yeah that's my my aim to well, be labeled in you, the you're doing a pretty good job of it Thank so you. um well thanks a lot for coming on and we'll talk to you soon thanks for having me take thanks. care bye bye